What up, Brooksy? Episode 100. Yes, sir. Century mark, baby. Congrats, baby. 100 episodes, man. Not a lot of podcasts make it this far. A lot of them die off. We've held strong, mm-hmm. man. 100 triple digits. Here we are. We, we got to... I'm, I'm actually excited. I mean, the postseason I'm excited for, but I get some guests on here in the off season. A little different speed in the off season, trying to figure out, you know, rosters and free agency and all that. But just like getting guests on here would be fun in the, in the winter time too. Get some uh, some beef, maybe not beef. That's the wrong word. You're getting some uh, some fire after your Otani news breaking. Oh, some that's attention. Fine. Yeah. Hey, listen, listen. I didn't say anything wrong. I said the Red Sox are in on him. Passon, did you see Jeff Passon talking to Jared Carabas on his podcast the other day? He Red Sox for one of the teams, he said, are in on Otani. Yeah. Just like I told you. Um, I think, you know, there was some stuff that, you know, I didn't want to talk about, you know, details of that. So me saying, like, you know, there's only so much I can say and stuff like that probably, you know, stoked the fire a little more. Um, and by me saying like, yeah, of course they're in their office right now trying to figure out like an offer and a contract that makes sense for both sides. And they're going to, they're going to try to get them. There's a lot of teams that are going to try to get them. It wasn't like I was saying they have an offer on the table. Like he's not even a free agent yet. That's called tampering. (laughs) So, um, they know better. That's not what I was saying. I see milkman back there walking around behind you all 18 years of them. He's always by my side. But, 11. Um, He's 11. I know. That's old, that's old yeah. for, a, for a retriever. But um, point being, of course they're in on Otani, as they should be. Yeah, I mean, he didn't say anything that was news. It was like... No, it's like, you know, but it, that's how the media is. That's how Boston is. Um, and you know what? Good. They should be excited. Because if they don't get Otani... They're going to get some other people, and it's going to be a fun club next year. They're going to add. Whoever they bring in as a GM, they're going to add. This ownership's ready to make moves, and um, I think the young core in Boston is ready to compete. So it's time to build around them with those vets, those proven guys, those go get guy from Japan, go get another arm, make a trade, whatever you got to do. It's time to go win. There's no more bridge years in Boston. They got got to go do something next year. We got a lot to discuss today. Um, Some a little bit of drama between Seattle and Houston, a little bit of drama in Atlanta Ooh. with the 4070 and Acuna. And then uh, we're going to kind of lay out the playoff picture as it stands now. And then we're going to kind of figure out what teams need to make it into the postseason, what other teams would need to have happen from other teams. We're going to do the whole, you ever seen basketball? This team yeah. needs to beat this team. And then this team actually needs to head over to that team and and, and beat them twice and, and win by this many simple. runs. It, it, this point, it's pretty cut and dry, I think. For the most part. Padres are still in, part. by the way. If if, if basically every National League wildcard team loses out, the Padres still have a chance, and the Padres go undefeated. They did win an extra so inning. You're, you're telling me there's a chance. It's all right. They, they went 1-12 in is. extra innings. Um, what, uh, what do you got on the buzz? What do you got on the news? What's going on? Let's start out with... You saw the uh, what, two things in Seattle. There's, there was weird stuff happening in Seattle. It just kind of jumped off the top of my head. We actually didn't discuss this, but George Kirby getting hit with a baseball oh, from a yeah. fan in the stance. Number one, great throw. <laughs> That's it's, it's impressive. I'm not condoning it. I'm not saying this this should happen. But, man, somebody dotted him. Like, That's not an easy throw. But that can't happen either. Like I, I get like throwing back a homer, this and that, and like guys make sure they try to get to the infield. I get it. Like, but in certain stadiums, infielders, outfielders, their backs are turned. They're, I mean, or they're looking towards the stands because they expect you to throw it back. No one's expecting a ball for, out of the hot dog vendor <laughs> in, in section one twenty five to launch a four seamer at your chest when you're on the mound. That was nuts. Luckily, they didn't hit him in the face. Caught him like in his body, and he was fine. But what the, what what's going on? Have you ever been hit by anything from a fan via f- maybe food, maybe? Uh no, just lots of f bombs. You sucks. <laughs> never but, a uh, drink, never a soda thrown. I at had, you. I've had some really bad things said to me, 
but that's I mean, you go play in Philly, Boston, whatever, like poof, it's rough. But, but no, I've never had anyone throw anything at me. What was the most taxing location that you played at? Philly. Philly. I Over mean, well, as a home as a as a home as a home player, Boston can be tough, you know, like they're on you. Uh this tough love, like they love you too. You you get a knock, you you hit a big homer, you know, come up big and make a sick play and you know make a big out. They're gonna give you love too. But if you suck, man, they're gonna let you hear it too. And that's part of it. That's that's nature of the beast. Like I'd rather play there and have the fans be all over me when I'm not playing well, than go play somewhere where they don't care. So Boston was your favorite place to play, but it was also the most difficult place to play. As a player, maybe? As a home player, 100%. I think on the road, Philly's pretty tough. Yeah. Over I New York? Had a, yeah. Over yeah. New York, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. New York's fine. New York, all right, here's the thing. New York's <laughs> so expensive. The closer you get to the field, those people aren't yelling at you. Yeah. Philly's not quite as expensive, and you get some dirt dogs down there. on the in the. Bro, I had a woman. I look over, it's the first inning. This lady's probably like 40. Late 30s, beautiful, good looking lady. Um, and she's yelling, Metal Brooks, Metal Brooks. It's the first inning. I'm a rookie. It's 2012. Uh, I'm just kind of like glance over, but I'm not giving her any attention. And she's screaming at me the whole inning. I go in. Um, uh, I don't remember if it was early or not. I'm it's all blending together now, but at some point early in the game, I hit a homer off of uh Joe Blanton to mm. right field. And I get back out there, so I'm feeling myself, you know. I'm feeling I'm feeling sexy, you know. I hit a homer in the show. I'm a rookie. I'm 23 years old, whatever. And um, man up rocks, man up rocks, look at me. I finally look at her. You're gonna have to bleep this out. I look at her and she goes, Oh, you, oh, it's about fucking time. I want you to know I'm gonna f your mom. <laughs> oh, 37 year old, like. Five foot one, I little thing. And she was the angriest human being I've ever seen in my life at a ballpark. And if she walked by, if she walked by, you'd be like, she would like compete in like Miss America or like some pageant. She's this little sweet thing. No, not in Philly. They don't make them like that. She told me she was going to do dirty things to my mama. <laughs> That's great. I mean, yeah. it's not great. It's it's not great for. But the, like the, at the that disrespect. point, the whole the whole section, the whole section was like, oh, they because they're like, what's his reaction? And I took my glove off, put it under my arm, and I started clapping. I was like, that's the best one I've ever heard. And she bowed and sat down and didn't say another word. I wish you could have seen her while you were donning the Phillies uniform when you actually played for the Phillies a I few mean, years after that. I I honestly think. Philly fans are tougher on their home players than they are visiting players. Yeah, that's probably fair. They boo the shit out of their own guys. Mm -hmm. It's tough. I mean, they they. It's kind of like Boston, but not. Boston fans aren't as rough around the edges. Sometimes it's just it's too much of Philly, in my opinion. Can I ask you something that might ruffle your feathers a little bit? Because I know, can't wait. You have a personal relationship with one of these players. I actually have a personal relationship with both of these players. It kills me to watch Bryce Harper have all this success with Philadelphia. Not that I don't like Bryce. I love Bryce as a player. I love how he has matured. But to watch Bryce Harper live out what should be Mike Trout's dream in Philadelphia. Mike Trout is a he grew up in New Jersey. But he's a Philadelphia yeah. Eagles fan. He grew up Philly fan. As a won a playoff game in his entire career in Los Angeles. Trout has stayed loyal his entire career. He probably could have asked for a trade at some point in his career. He had, he stayed loyal to LA and he's still in orange County and they have not rewarded him with anything in that same tone of breath. Bryce Harper signs a $330 million contract to be the franchise in Philadelphia. And what has he done? Carries them to the world series last year. It just, clinched another playoff spot here in 2023 Bryce Harper is living out Mike Trout's dream in Philadelphia that should be Mike Trout why would that ruffle my feathers I agree it sucks I love Trout I love Harper like I love these guys um I want to see them both succeed but yeah what Harper I mean uh Trout's just trapped man 
I, I feel like they're starting to, you know, some stuff starting to get out about Trout one. Hey, yeah, like maybe they'll trade him, this and that. You think he's gone? Oh, man. <clears throat> I, I don't know. I I would say that's really irresponsible by that uh by that ownership group, but at this point, I put nothing past those guys. I think they have to restart at this point. I think so too. And just for like this might sound weird, but like if you respect the game enough, let one of the best players of all time go win. Yeah. Like let him bolster his back of his baseball card and his his legend because he's going to be that much more remembered with World Series rings. Mm-hmm. At least one. And and I just selfishly I want to watch the best players on the biggest stage in October, November, whenever, late in the, in the postseason, in those big games to get to the World Series, in the World Series. How fun was it watching him and Shohei face off in the WBC? But I want to see that for seven games. I want to see that for 30 at-bats. You know what I mean? Like We need yeah. that. The game needs that. True or false, and then we can move on. True or false, Shohei Otani will be in a Los Angeles Angels uniform in 2024. Is that a real question? No. False. He will not be. True or false, my trout would be in a Los Angeles Angels uniform in 2024. True. Okay. We can move on. But maybe like trade deadline or something, something happens. I don't I don't know. <clears throat> it's going to be really hard to find a suitor. Um the only thing is, is like, and I'll be quick because I know we 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 have stuff to do, stuff to talk about, but like if a team has the financial means to commit to Shohei Otani mm-hmm. and they don't get him, like a, one of these big time teams, the Yankees, like somebody, like if they don't get him and they, they have that money aside where they're like, this this can work, why not take on that contract then? Yeah. I know you're not getting two players, but you're also, you're not paying Trout 50 million a year. You're paying them 30 something. I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it, it's 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 complicated. I think there is a deal to be done, though. I do. Get him out of there. Just let him go win somewhere, please. I don't. I don't want him to be new. I don't want it to be New York. I mean, great if I get to see him. He's my boy. But I go to the Phillies. Nah, I don't even know. They can't pay him. The Bro- don't put it past Dabrowski and those guys to like be like, fuck it. We're pulling a Preller or a Cohen, and we're just making it rain up in this thing. The Phillies traded for an angel center fielder a year ago in Brandon Marsh. Just, yeah. just saying. Man. All right, let's move on. Uh, 40-70 for Ronald Acuna Jr. Oof. Unreal, objectively, by the way. objectively impressive. Um, kind of the, I hate to talk about this as the, the takeaway story because it takes away from the accomplishment that Ronald Acuna Jr. had, 47, yeah. first player ever. But as long as long as you don't say, oh, but the bags are bigger. I don't care. Everybody had those bags this year. I don't see anybody sniff those numbers. Agreed, but let's not compare them to Ricky. I'm not. Okay. We can compare it to current times and be like, holy shit, this is incredible. Current times and 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 nobody's ever done it. Period. Yeah. Period. He he set himself apart at 3060. Yeah. All right. And now he went into a whole new stratosphere. We're not going to see this, dude. Like, <clears throat> this isn't like a, every year we're going to look up and be like, oh, 30, 40 and 70. Oof, there's another one. Nah, man. This is like, he's that special hybrid of strength, speed, power, like all that. And he's a five tool player. He's hitting 330. Like, he's MVP. We don't have to talk about MVP stuff right now, but he is. Context matters, but just know this too. Like, the bigger bases this year, there were other rules back in 1980 when Ricky was still in bases, you know, like guys weren't throwing as hard, which means he had more time in between release of the ball to the catcher to steal that second base. So there's That's, different yeah. factors that play. I mean, the difference, two. yes and no. I mean, yeah, like guys 98 and guys throwing 88. Yeah, but I mean, it's really like, like it's not that much, you know. It's not. I mean, that's the difference between safe and out a lot of times. That's the difference also, between regular. There's also a replay now too, which could play into it. That's Who true. Knows? And, and there, that's also the similar difference between a regular size base and a 
larger base, right? Point, you know, like it's that. Point. No, it's all it's all fun conversation, but I want to take nothing away from what he's done because not only has he hit 40, what, 41 homers, 70 bags, he's also, I don't know his average, but it's over 330, right? Uh, it's got to be. Yeah. He was close to 340 a couple of days ago. Yeah. I'll let you look that up. But, I mean, this is, it's. 336. 336. So, okay, he dropped three points. Poor guy. He must have only got one hit yesterday. Um, but this is like one of like an all-time absurd seasons. All-time. Now, with that being said, your <laughs> I know thoughts. Where this is, I know where this is going. Your thoughts on the Cubs broadcasts and their comments regarding the video that was displayed on the Atlanta Braves board. And there was a stoppage of the game to celebrate the moment of 4074 Acuna. It was an extra innings ball game. The Cubs are in deep in a wild card chase right now. The game was stopped. Next batter, it was the same batter, actually. Ozzy Albies hits a walk-off single to right field. Was that because of the stoppage of game? Good luck proving that. But your thoughts yeah. on, on the Cubs broadcasters disagreeing with the stoppage, your thoughts on just the stoppage in general to celebrate yeah. the 47. Um I fully understand why the Braves did that. They're at home. It's a big deal. No one's ever done it. It's a it's a great feat. I understand why they did it. I do also understand why the Cubs broadcasters reacted the way they did, why the Cubs reacted they did, uh, because you said it. I mean, this is a 5-5 game in the 10th or the 11th. Ten, it was extra ten, innings. Ten. I think it was the 10th, yeah. Um, he steals the bag. Obviously, he's the winning run, so it's a big moment. You said the Cubs are, were, at the time, tied for – or they are tied for the third wild card spot right now yep. with the Marlins. So I mean, this is like must win territory. They lost on that terrible the fly ball to right field the night before uh, with Suzuki losing the ball in the lights or whatever it was that happened. Uh, so they're they're in a must win opportunity right there or must win situation for their ball club. And um, yeah, I understand why they were pissed about it. Um, in the same breath, I do understand why the Braves did what they did. I just think the timing was off. But that's when it happened. The Braves had it planned. You got to remember, the people that run the video board, they didn't play in the big leagues. They didn't coach in the big leagues. They don't have feel for these situations. They have a shot sheet, and they say, if this happens, you run this. Mm -hmm. Probably set up to go, okay, hopefully this happens in the fourth inning, yes. and it's three to two. And it doesn't matter, and we can take two minutes, run this montage, and it's no big deal. He tips his cap, takes the base, whatever, and we move on. They didn't expect that to be the situation. And the guy in the, in the video room was said, hey, this is what I was told to do. Run it. So I see both sides. I see the whole picture. I know why they're pissed. I know why the Braves did it. Let's move on. Sucks for the Cubs, but it happened. Yeah, I do wish that the production coordinator or whomever was in charge of that would have said, hey, guys, this isn't the time. Let's wait. Either in between innings, let's say that, or like even do it pregame today, could do that for sure. Or you can you know, do it right like, after the game. As soon as that game ends, put you're it not going to do court. it after the game if you lose. But like, yeah, but you can what definitely sucks have is, a but, moment. But, yeah, but if you win the game, then you're like, it's all walk off. We got the game winning hit. Ozzy Albies, he's the walk off. It's like, oh, never mind. Now we're going to do it. Yeah, it's just been weird. So I understand why they did it. Period. I'm with you. By the way. That this was a very cool perspective to put on the Acuna accomplishment. Hall of Famer Onus Wagner, he's 10th all time with 723 career stolen bases. He never stole 70 bases in a season. Hall of Famer Frank Robinson is 10th all time with 586 career homers. He hit 40 home runs in a season just one time. Acuna stole 70 and hit 40 dingers this season alone. That's pretty impressive. Sick. Live ball era. <laughs> Try it. Uh, by the way, we have $5 hats on sale. All you have to do is leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. The link is on our Twitter page, or you can just go to our Apple Podcast page. Leave a review. Send us a direct message. We'll take it from there, and we'll get you all set up with some Wake and Rick hats back here. Audio platform. People don't know what I'm talking about right now. But back here, Wake and Rick hats if you want one. What else did you want to discuss, Brooks? You got a couple things on your list. Um... I mean, hats off Tito Francona riding off right. in the sunset, right? right? I thought the uh, Guardians did that right. I know knowing Tito, so I didn't play for him in the regular season. I played for him in, like, spring training. His last year was 2011. 
So I was had some spring training games with the team then, but I went in the big leagues till the next year in 2012, and he was gone by then. Um, but Hall of Fame manager, Hall of Fame human being. Uh, this is just one of those special managers, kind of the last of a dying breed as far as uh, old school blue collar baseball lifers, right? This is like, this is the type of manager that always had his players' backs. Uh, didn't matter if you were the last guy on the bench or the the superstar, the motor of the club. You were important to him, and he made you feel that way. And I think every player that's ever played for him puts him on a level above everyone else just because of how special he is. And um, I think he he's one of those guys also who had that special ability to get the most out of his his roster. I mean, you look at some of those teams in, in Cleveland that he had that he got to the postseason. They, on paper, they weren't good. They weren't supposed to go anywhere, and yet here they are right there in the mix every year. So he does something special for clubs. Obviously, we know what he did in Boston. Um, broke the 86-year drought, the curse of the Bambino. Won the World Series in 04, won in 07. He'll never buy another beer, another meal, whatever, in Boston ever again. So he's a, he's a special guy, and um, the game the game's going to miss him for sure. So I had to give him some love. Do you ever have any uh, you know, fun stories from you and Tito in the clubhouse? No. Or- no, 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 because I was just a young pup. I was going yeah. into double A in twenty eleven, his last year there. I had some spring training games. <clears throat> he would always come over and talk. Uh he always called me Brooksy. Everybody called me Brooksy, but he would always make sure that like I was comfortable. He wanted me to have fun. He told me, you know, don't go hide in the corner like the young guy tell you young guys to do. Like get up here on the rail, go hang out with, you know, all these studs that are here on our team. Uh take advantage of being here with these superstars. Mm-hmm. You're you were played in high A last year. Do you have this opportunity? You're not just here to just come in and run base and, and play defense and get in at bat just to give them a breather. You're also here because we want you to learn and what it will see what it's like to be a big leader. So he was always good. I mean, he'd always like, you know, bear hug you, put your arm around your neck, like put you in. He was just he was fun, man. And like I said, he treated everybody the same. I was just a young kid and he made me feel welcome there. I don't have any really special times with him because I didn't get to play with him in the big leagues. I wish I did. I got, Bobby Val- I got Bobby Valentine instead. That's right. <laughs> yeah. We'll leave that there. But uh, your your teammates love Tito. I'm oh, guessing. my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Right yeah, that's, I think that's what was tough with, with Petey and, the, and those guys where they went from playing. Uh, Petey came up in 07, so he had him 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, five seasons. Petey wins a rookie of the year in 07. He wins an MVP in 08. He is who he is, Dustin Pedroia, dirt dog, dirty chicken, whatever you want to call him, for all those years. And then it's like Bobby V comes in, and the vibe was just way different than mm-hmm. what he was used to. So it was kind of tough for those vets to go from Tito. And, you know, they had to let him go after all, like, the the way 2011 ended. There was, like, all the chicken and beer shit, like, bullshit. Yeah. You know, there's always some bullshit in the media when Boston misses the playoffs or – uh, it ends like it did, you know, at the end of the season with Longo hitting the home run against the Yankees in, at the Trop. Uh, yep. The the play at the plate uh, in Baltimore, the, the Red Sox lose and they end up missing the playoffs by that. Uh, all that happening, it was just like a bad mix. And then they're like, all right, we're fine. We're getting rid of manager and switching it up. It's crazy. One of only two managers in MLB history. This kind of like undermines his accomplishments, but I think it's fun. One of only two managers in MLB history to be born in South Dakota. Didn't know that. Fun facts. The more you know, Brooksy. He was also like one of the best college baseball players ever. Arizona. In Arizona. Yeah. yeah. Um, he was a good big leaguer too. He blew his knee out. And like everybody always says, you know, he had a chance to have a, a really, really good career. Uh, but he, he was never the same after he blew his knee out. So that kind of sucks. All right. He worked, it worked out. It worked out for him. Let's talk wild card as we uh, <clears throat> tie a bow on today's episode. Yeah, Philadelphia is locked in their wild card spot. They're going to be the number one wild card team in the National League. After they that, scare me, dude. The I know Phillies like are it. a scary postseason team. I'm and telling to, you. To feed into your point, Atlanta and LA are the two favorites, betting favorites, to win the World Series. Their starting rotations are a little crippled right now. Yeah, dude. I mean, I I would take Atlanta's over. Man, I don't know. Yeah, they're both kind of beat up. Because you said on the last episode, you're like, oh, no problem. No Max Freed. They still got Charlie Morton. Well, Charlie Morton's on the injured list now, too. 
Right. You didn't know that when you said that, of course, but. Right, right. It was literally the next day. Hey, Brooksy, look out for Milwaukee. Oh, dude. I I just watched Corbin Burns get a 200 strikeout on the season. So What do you need in the postseason? You need really good strike defense. Deep in, a, in a streaky lineup, and that's what they do. They're streaky, but flip the coin, see what exactly. you get. Exactly, but that's what baseball is sometimes, you know? Oh, for sure. I just, like, if I match them up with Philly, I think Philly wins, you know? It's like, so, well, they're going to play whoever gets the third wild card spot. Yeah, so we're, you're looking at if Arizona holds on, they'll be the second wild card team. So you're looking at either the Cubs, uh, who I feel like you're hurting right now. Your brain's very like your brain is just imploding right now because of all I'm this thinking, thought process. I'm thinking, I'm, oh, I'm I, like, I, I want to see how this plays out, but I have the playoff picture. No, right. no, no. Let me do this. I got this. It's going to either be the Cubs, the Marlins, or the Reds. That's what it is. And probably in that third spot. So I'm leaning Cubs. I just don't know because yeah. playing Atlanta this late sucks, but they're playing the Cubs are playing Milwaukee next. Yeah. And Milwaukee, good chance they can kind of rest some guys. Mm-hmm. So maybe the Cubs have a good chance to take care of business uh against Milwaukee. But the Marlins are playing the Pirates. Um the, the Marlins Reds are... play the car and the Cardinal the yeah. Reds play the Cardinals. So though that, that both those teams could win out. Like they really could. So this could, this is going to come down to the last day of the season. And, and I hope so, because this is how this should be. This is so fun. I'm fired up for it. Arizona, you think is a lock one and a half games up in that second spot. They mm. play, they play, you know, Houston. Arizona's playing really good ball. They, 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 they play Houston. Beat. Houston has to win these games. Yeah, I know. But Arizona, I know that's going to be a battle in Arizona, man. Yeah, that's going to be fun. That it was a, so, Arizona could have clinched today if they had beaten the White Sox and the Cubs lost. Gotcha. Uh, Arizona got beat by the White Sox. They won the first two games, like combined eighteen to four, and then they lost three to one today uh, to the uh, to the uh, White Sox. So mm. they needed today bad, and they knew it, you know, because they know what's coming uh, in Phoenix when they get home. Houston is Houston, so that's going to be tough. American League West. Houston kind of took care of business of Seattle this week, but Texas has t- taken a leap forward. They are two and a half right. games up, and they could, as you mentioned, they could clinch today with a victory. Is that right? Yeah. So they can, well, they can clinch a playoff spot with gotcha. a win versus Seattle tonight. Um, Houston's not playing tonight. So they're, so Texas can't clinch the division because mm-hmm. the magic number is two for the division. Um, but really, like, this is kind of amazing. If you really think about it, like, Texas, the, at the end of August, in the first two weeks of September, Texas was dog shit. Like mm-hmm. their offense completely stopped working and was dysfunctional. Their bullpen was for that three week, three and a half week period was the worst in baseball. And it was like, wow, they're in full tank mode after being one of the best teams in baseball for the first hundred games. Um, but luckily, you know, they got their mojo back. But luckily, uh, Houston struggled and Seattle also struggled during that time and played about 500 baseball, maybe even under 500 during that span. So it kind of helped them out. But um, I like this Texas team, man. They're scary when they get going. They're they're really scary. Can you imagine if they had Degrom and Scherzer? Yeah. Well, I guess they probably wouldn't have Scherzer had Degrom not gotten hurt. Probably wouldn't have traded for Scherzer, but maybe, maybe. But uh, I'll end this on Texas. They Texas must win the West because their pitchers are kind of running on fumes. Their bullpen struggled and mm-hmm. they need a break. And yeah, if they, they win the division, buy. they get a bye. Right. Yeah. So they're yes. Playoff spots. Great, but they need to win the division so they can have a couple of days off. This surprised me when I was doing research for the wild card the other day. Can you guess who has the best ERA among starting pitchers as a team in the American league? Oh, no, no, no. Cross major league baseball, actually best starting uh, pitcher ERA. Twins. That was a good guess. They were, I think, top four, maybe top three. Uh, what league? American League. It'll okay. it'll really surprise you because it, well, it did me. It did me. I don't know Baltimore. I don't know Toronto. Oh yeah, I knew that. I, I mean, they that. have some guys for sure. It's just you don't think as when you think of Toronto, you think of that lineup. No, oh, oh, one hundred percent. 
The starting rotation uh, is the best ERA in Major League Baseball. It's impressive. Gosman was good. Barrios had a bounce back year. Kikuchi was solid. Kikuchi was solid. He was their five. That's despite not having Alec Manoa, too. I was just about to say, and Manoa heard it because he had a six. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're it's going to be fun, man. Too. The Toronto's half game in. up. Houston's got that third wild card, and Seattle's one and a half games back. So Seattle needs help. Houston needs to take care of business. Toronto needs to take care of business. And then the National League, Miami, Chicago tied for the last wild card spot. Arizona one and a half games up. They hold their, uh, you know, they hold the power to their own destiny. So this last weekend is going to be an absolute blast. Brooksy and I will be with you guys along the way. And uh, I think Monday is going to be another podcast for us to kind of look forward. For sure. Unless something crazy happens like Saturday or Sunday. Hopefully. Probably Monday. Just kind of looking toward, you know, what happened over the weekend in the last series and then looking forward to the wild guard series. I think playoffs are here, maybe. Weird. I think things could get weird, Brooksy. Oh, they're going to get real weird, weird in the man. NL. The NL is going to get weird. I don't think the AL is going to get too weird. NL is going to get funky. Funky, funky, funky. Let's have some fun, people. Peace Let's out. Peace.